Go ahead and make fly subscribers. So this is going to be the fly I'm tying today. As you might know, this is a Prince Nymph. I'm using a hot spot here today, but you can tie it with any color thread. All right, so we're just gonna put the hook in the vise with the bead on already. So for a hook today, I'm using the Risen 9231. Uh, the 2x long is kind of what you're looking for. Now I like these because they're barbless. They're quite strong and really good price. I really do like risen hooks. Uh, but the 9231 is uh, 2x long. So that's what you're looking for if you're going to use a different brand. Just make sure it's uh, extra long because whenever you put a bead on, generally you're going to want an extra long hook. And then for a bead, I'm using brass, um, also from Risen Fly. Good prices for their beads, but uh, 2.8 millimeter. Uh, so you could use a range. Um, I like a little smaller for these. If you wanted it heavier, you could use tungsten. Or, you know, I mean, go ahead and uh, use uh, a larger bead if you want. I find, though, that it kind of bulks up the head a little more than I like. So we are going to start the thread. And then we're going to just wrap the thread up in behind the bead here to kind of stabilize it a little bit. It's still going to push back. You don't want to go too bulky right there. It'll end up holding back in a little bit um, after we tie some materials there. But we're just going to come back with touching wraps or as touching as you can make it. And then right here at the back, we're going to make a little thread bump, okay? As you can see, and then we're going to come a little forward past that thread bump. As you can see, we made a slight thread bump there. Next, we are going to use a stripped goose biot, this in brown for the tail. Now, when, when grabbing these goose biots, um, if you've got a brand new strip here, these first quite a few here are really thin. They're almost unable to be used. You really want to come up further. You can see up there that they're a little thicker. Up down here, they're just so small, so fine. There's just not, they would end up not looking like anything. So you want to come up a little further and basically start up there unless of course you're tying a really small one maybe maybe you need that so I strip off two okay and I, I trim off the fuzzy square as you can see here they're squared off um, this would have some curly cues on it and then I'm gonna see if I can do this in the camera but you want to flip these around I'm trying to look through the camera and do this so my depth perception is not quite there but you want to do that, flip them around so they're splayed outward, and then try to align those tips as good as possible. Um, and that's about right. And then you're going to measure out roughly around a half of a hook shank, and then transfer that. You want to make sure these aren't spinning on you. Transfer that to your other hand, like so. And then, as you can see, I'm splitting the hook like this. And I am kind of turning this this way a little bit because the thread is going to rotate it. If you have it straight up, it's going to rotate it back that way like this, and that won't be good. So you want to kind of turn it a little towards you and then make two wraps. You want to make sure that's in there, and then you can tighten that. Come back a little bit. And I made that a little too short. So let's come back a little bit. And unfortunately, I might have to get a new, new biot. It's really hard to do this in the camera, I'm going to be honest. All right, so you want to use as little wraps as possible. I'm probably using too much there. There we go. That's about the right length. And then you can kind of push. Try to get these laying even. There we go. And you're just going to walk it back just a little bit until you're right up against that thing, that bump. And see how that just splayed them out? So those are splayed outward. One's a little higher than the other. Let's see if we can fix this. There we go. All right. So that becomes the, the tail section here. Then you're going to just come in with your scissors and you want to cut this just a little shy of where the bead is, okay? There we go. And that's just going to build a nice taper. 
then we are going to come up and touching wraps up and that might spin a little bit this uh, biot we'll make touching wraps all the way up cover all that and then come back down but not all the way so see where I'm at so we're just building that taper as you come up and then back down you build up bulk with the thread and by the way I don't think I told you I'm using Vivas 6 ot in the orange color now you could use red you can use brown, black, white. I mean, really any color thread. Um, I like the orange because, I mean, it'll, as you can see, you don't see it anywhere except for right at that head. So it kind of gives a nice little hot spot. Next, I've got this uh, Mylar tinsel, and it's gold on one side, silver on the other. It's the extra small size. Gold is showing, but on the other side, it's silver. So it gives you, I, I like it because it gives you two different colors that you could use and you don't have to buy two different spools so as you can see there's the silver side the gold is on the other and we're going to tie in actually the silver side you want that again we're going to build a taper you want that to be about where the um, goose biots ended and we're going to come back a couple rats but not all the way to the back yet and then you can get these little clips I just stole one from my daughter. Um, <laughs> hair clip things and uh, kind of clip that to your vise so it's not, because it's curly cue, it's going to get in your way. So clip that back. And now we are going to use some strung peacock curl. And uh, you want two roughly around, you want to select two that are about the same length. Okay. Align those tips, doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to cut them off square but we cut off the tips because those tips are rather fragile. So you don't necessarily want to leave them there. All right, so we are going to tie this in. Now I'm having an issue with this wanting to jump back. So there we go. I spun the thread a little bit. Again, tie, tie them where the tips are just about up to where everything else is. So you build that taper. And we're going to come back, as you can see, right behind that tail and then we'll just kind of come back up touching wraps best you can this doesn't have to be perfect because it's all going to be covered okay so again we're leaving a little bit of space up by the head but we are going to taper this by coming back down partially actually there we go just go there and then back up once more you know if this is a larger fly you might want to do this a couple times okay if you had a finer thread you might want to do it a couple times so that's up to you so now we're going to take these plunger style hackle pliers i'm going to grab the ends of these hackle you can see it leaves those little tag ends hanging out so we're just going to Trim that off just to make sure that we're those aren't getting in the way, All right? And we're gonna then probably could have done this right before. Had a little brush of super glue because these are kind of fragile. So, all right. So we're gonna twist this, and you want to be really careful on the first couple twists because this is rather fragile material, and it's gonna gonna break on you so if you twist it too much that will end up breaking all right so pretty much you're gonna be twisting almost every wrap in the beginning at least and you might ask what direction I'm twisting um, it is counterclockwise because I'm tying clockwise so I believe that's the best, but I think you could go the other direction too when you twist. Oh, see, there we go. It broke off. So what we're going to do <laughs> this is good though, because now I can show you instead of redoing everything there is a little trick. Let's walk this back.
capture that. This is really fine. And you can just, once you got a couple wraps, well, should be able to just pop that off. There we go. All right. So let's grab another couple pieces of peacock curl. Okay. Then we will just tie that back in. Is this perfect? No, but honestly, you're probably not going to tell a difference. So as you can see, they're almost touching wraps. I am building quite a bit of bulk here. I like these uh, bodies to be quite bulky. I'm just making wraps right on top of one another. You know, and th this is the same technique you would use if uh, you didn't have peacock curl long enough. So you would just tie it off like I just did. And then you would go ahead and tie in another piece. If you had, let's say, a much larger fly and your peacock curl wasn't long enough to bulk it up the way that you want. So we are making some really tight wraps before I just, well, that didn't quite do it. Usually you can just kind of break it off. <laughs> but there we go. So as you can see, that's why I left a little bit of space up here because there is quite a bit of bulk that we're building. All right, next we are gonna get a hackle. So this is a whiting hen hackle, but any hen saddle basically, I'm sorry, this is a cape. Any hen cape should work, even some saddles if they're really small feathers, but you can see how small these feathers are. They're brown, and I like the brown. Um, you could use black. I know a lot of people use black. Uh, but, you know, basically what we're doing is we're getting these to make some legs. And you can see these are much finer, and so the fibers are going to be a little shorter. And you want these to be right about there. You want it going the opposite direction here. Uh, about one and a half, maybe two times the hook point past the hook point okay so right about there is good and that would be closer to the end here so we are going to uh, let's see if I can do this in camera we're going to strip off some of the fuzzies I'm going to call it fuzzies it's not fuzzies because it's much further up but um, all right, so we stripped that off. Now we're left with this, and we are going to tie this in. You can see how the feather has a curve, right? It's curved back, and those fibers are actually curved back that way as well. So you kind of want that, you want to play into the curve of the feather. And you know what, guys? <laughs> with everything uh, that happened there, I forgot. So now we've got this. <laughs> so you could use a wire here. Instead of this, uh, um, if you wanted something a little more durable, wire is going to be heavier, but we're just going to rib this um, with the tinsel, okay? And you can see now it's the gold showing rather than the silver. Try to get these as even as you possibly can. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. But you know as a tire you always want to have your flies looking nice so what I do is I tie up you know up it and then pull it rearward and tie back so that's not going to come loose that makes it pretty secure come forward and kind of make this a little flatter so that way that feather doesn't get all jumbled up there all right now as I said you want it angled Get my hand out of the way um, rearward so I, I just tie it in perpendicular like that so I make a wrap over it um, and then I do like an X wrap just like that and you can tighten and as you can see I use the thread to pull that tag end forward okay 
and I just wrap over that tag end and that is tight that's not going to come loose you can cut that tag end if you want off there we go a little bit of it showing not a big deal and then we're going to use another type of hackle plier now these I think are from Umqua I like them because they have that little rubber thing but they're this style right um, you just grab the tip of the hackle we don't need a lot of hackle here guys we're just making some legs right so I mean the legs aren't super bushy on any bug so we're gonna make oh what is that two two wraps or so we're gonna capture it we're gonna make uh, two over it one in front maybe two in front and now let's see if I can turn this so you can see what I'm doing here I'm just gonna cut off the hackle sometimes you need something to separate it but just use your fingers to kind of work that fiber downward if you got some stubborn hackle you could always just clip that hackle off so you want to bring this down and back and wrap back up on top of it like so all right now you form the legs you could work this down even more if you wanted and you left a flat spot on top for probably my least favorite part of the fly um, this is never easy there are some techniques that can make it a little easier so what I do is I pull off two and here I'll show you the fuzzy you see how those strip off and they're kind of I, I like to cut that part off okay so it makes it a little easier to work with I put one aside and I do this one at a time so I'm going to turn this so we lay one and you want them kind of angled off and you don't want these way far back a lot of people tie these in like this no and, and you really kind of want them not even to the very back end here you want them right around there about maybe a third of the way back up so maybe two-thirds down and you want it angled to the side here lay your thumb on it like so and come in with your scissors and just cut it off right flush there make two or three wraps that holds it now you could there you go if that didn't give enough angle then you can always kind of move it a little bit so we're going to come in try to make that as even as possible trap that with your finger cut it like that so it evens up with that bead there we go so let's see i think that it's angled a little too far down so that's, oh, no, that's too far back the other way. There we go. I like that. Maybe those are a little long. I would say I like them just slightly shorter. Some people like them longer, so no big deal. So now you've got those in. Got one. Well, we'll cut that off in a minute. Uh, all right, so now we're just going to whip finish. You always whip finish from back to front. four or five turn whip finish like so cut off the excess now you got a nice hot spot on this before I move forward I'm just gonna trim that off and you can see this is kind of they're not super even here well oh, it's a little too much there we go I think that's pretty darn even this one might be a little bit longer but I mean you know it doesn't have to be perfect nature and it's not perfect but those came out pretty good considering the difficulty it was it's not as difficult as sometimes you know trying to pre-cut them and then lay them in and all that it's a pain so now just to really secure everything I've got this solar res ultra thin resin uh, this stuff is amazing and I just like painting a little on top so what that's gonna do is gonna really hold those in 
because no matter how tight you tie those, those are slick, they're going to want to come off. So this basically hardens that and makes it so they're going to be there. They're not going to come off. Okay, and then I paint around the wet finish and then cure it with your UV light. It doesn't take long. Boom, that's done. And that is cured and those are not going to come off no matter what you do. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing if you grab some pliers and pull it, they might break off, but those are in there solid. So there it is. There's the finished Prince Nymph. They are a staple. I mean, they've been around for a long time and pretty much, I mean, they don't really mimic anything in particular, but they're a general kind of all around bug imitation. Maybe a stonefly, some people say even a caddis. Like I said, there's nothing particularly exact that it mimics, but it for some reason attracts the fish. A lot of people use these, especially if you've got a hot spot like this, or if it's um, a tungsten bead, use that as a lead fly to get everything down. Kind of grabs the fish's attention and you can drop something a little more natural on the back of it and fish it like that as a nymph. Uh, but they're just really good all around flies. I've caught, I mean, not just trout on them. I've caught bass, I've caught sunfish and you know, a wide range of fish on these. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. As you all know, I am sponsored by Risen Fly, people that made the hook and uh, bead that I use today. They have a wide selection of fly tying materials, hooks and stuff, but they also sell rods and reels, all manufactured by them. They are great prices. I mean, really, in reality, they're some of the best prices for everything that they have. They're also offering you guys 15% off of anything you buy in their shop. So go to www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for that 15% off. It helps the channel. If you're working with my, if you're buying stuff from my sponsor, keeps them wanting to sponsor me, keeps these videos still coming through. Because without them, without you guys, without um, all all that, uh, you guys watching everything, I wouldn't be able to do this. So I really appreciate if you purchase from my sponsor. So like with all my videos below, I have links to every single product that I used. All the materials will be linked below to either. Risen Fly or the Fly Artist. Both places are really good to work with um, and both have wonderful customer service for you guys. That's something that I focus heavily on to make sure that they provide you guys with the best service possible. So definitely check both of them out. Links below. Also check out my Patreon. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month you can get some really cool perks for the channel, so, uh, including early access to videos. You can do one-on-one -on -one help and support for tying flies. I can give you guys some advice over the phone or text if you want or whatever it may be. So um, video chat if that's how you want to do it. But I'll do what I can to help you. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.